welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 628. I really appreciate you tuning in. Yesterday, I took a tour of the Ohio Wildlife Center with Executive Director Dusty Lombardi and Service Coordinator Allison Sullivan. It was cold. I think I caught a cold, and so it's a good thing that most of today's show is recorded. I recorded it yesterday. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all uh, episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. One last reminder, in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. The number to call if you want to pre-program it is 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. So let's go ahead and put that in your phone, and let's get on with the interview. All right, so I'm with Dusty Lombardi, and she is the executive director of the Ohio Wildlife Center. Is this privately funded? Yeah, we are a nonprofit. Actually, we um, opened our doors as a nonprofit in 1984, so we've been around for about 36 years. Wow, and so I see you have, we're just walking on this path. What kind of birds will live in that little box there? For, uh, bluebirds. Blue, bluebirds? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're on our property in Cook Road right now, which is in Powell, Ohio, and we have about 20 acres just north of Shawnee Hills. That's kind of a coincidence because my dental office is on Cook Road, although Cook Road for me is C-O-O-K-E. We purchased this property in 1999 just so that we would be able to have an education facility and a sanctuary for animals that could not be released back to the wild. And then we also have five acres dedicated to our rehab facility where animals can be released back to the wild. Oh, cool. That's really neat. That's really neat. And it's all privately funded. How did you get started then in 1984? Where did that funding come from? It was the genius of, of a man named Dr. Donald Burton, and he is the founder of our organization. When he was in veterinary school, he started having a passion for native wildlife, and people just started to hear about him um, when he went into private practice and they started bringing animals to him and and he started caring for them and he would actually put them in a garage next to his animal clinic and yeah so we started in a garage <laughs> and, uh, and he then just slowly but surely started to grow the organization and as the organization grew things started happening and went from just a one man one show to over 200 volunteers over 20 employees and now we also have a social enterprise called SCRAM. SCRAM, so I'm assuming that's an acronym for something? Yes, Suburban Commercial Residential Animal Management. Okay. Scram. Yeah, but we like SCRAM. <laughs> we actually have some coupons, I think they're... Yeah, and I yeah I put a coupon in your packet, okay. too. Yeah, we think that's much oh, easier to remember. Oh, you can tell, it, you can tell. Yeah, what do we have here? We, we're going to go We're gonna go on a tour. I'm going to oh, go okay. get the, the people to give you a tour around this, and they're going to tell you why these animals are here, we call them our broken animals because they can't be released back to the wild. So we're going to get a tour of our, it's called the Dempsey Animal Facility. Okay. And Dempsey is Dempsey in the... Dempsey stands for Naomi Dempsey, who was one of our major donors who loved wildlife and also Dr. Burton. And so she funded this facility for us. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Now may be a good time to remind you that you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist coming up in about seven or eight minutes. And the question is going to be about squirrels. Hello. Hi. Hello. This is Allison. Hi, Allison. Hi. How are you? 
Oh, my glasses are fogging up. So, Allison is one of our educators, and she graduated from Otterbein yep. University in the Zoo and Conservation, Zoo and Conservation Science, Science. Science Program, yep. which is a, well, how many years do you think that's? Five, six, seven year program it's um, been in? Yeah, so I think I was the third graduating class in 2018, so it's still fairly new. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it sounds yeah. really cool. And I hear you're the new service coordinator. Yep. Yeah, so she's going to be doing the tour. Oh, you're going to give us a tour. Okay. And I think you know our daughter's a veterinarian. Oh, I did not know that. Did not know that? No. Yeah. She gra- when did she graduate? I'm trying to remember. From <laughs> It was about 10 years ago from Ohio State. And then she went on and did a residency at Texas A&M oh. and became an internal medicine specialist. Oh, that's fantastic. We, we think also she have a veterinarian that is employed with us. Her name is Dr. Melinda Marks, and she graduated from Ohio State as well. So she also works at Animal Care Unlimited and with Ohio Wildlife Center. Awesome. Heather might know her. You they never know. They might know each other, <laughs> right? So, Allison, you're going to show us, huh? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And your name is Allison Sullivan, right? Yes. Now, like I said, Preston just left for an off-site program, so some of our education animals are not at home right now. So this is Edgar, who is one of our opossums, and he is at our program, so he's not in there. But Eugene, yeah, Eugene is another one of our opossums. I think he's hiding underneath that blanket. (laughs) He's kind of moving around a little bit. Maybe if we talk to him for a second, he might come out and see us. But he lives with us because when he was a baby, he actually got his tail bit off by a raccoon. We think it was probably a raccoon, so he does not have that long rat-like tail like Virginia opossums should. So that kind of throws his balance off and makes it harder for him to climb and stuff like that. So he lives with us because he might not survive as well out in the wild. Who named him? He was actually one of our animals that we put out a post on Facebook and we put out a poll and then we let the public choose because the public is the whole reason that we're here. So we let them kind of have input on our animals' names. So Eugene was picked from a list of names. And what is the Facebook page? So if you just go to Facebook, it's literally just called Ohio Wildlife Center and then Scram also has their own Facebook page. So there are two separate pages on Facebook, but we usually share each other's posts on Facebook. So if you go to one, you can usually find the other. So yeah, all of our events are on our Facebook page and also on our website. So, yeah. so we had an opossum that would come to our bird feeder and eat the, oh, the yeah. seed that the birds had dropped onto the ground. Oh yeah, they're good scavengers for sure. And here is our striped skunk. This is Tuxedo. He might come out. And he was another one that was too friendly with people. That happens sometimes with our animals when they come to our our pre-release facility. Sometimes they just have a personality that we can <laughs> tell that they wouldn't do very well out in the wild. So striped skunk out in the wild should not be coming out right when he hears people's voices. They should be running and hiding. But Tuxedo is very friendly, so we keep him here with us. He's very handsome. Yeah, we had a family of skunks living under our deck, which we thought was <laughs> we thought it was fun. Yes, <laughs> they love that. We didn't feed them, but they again would go under the bird feeder and they would yeah, scavenge what was yeah, left. Get all that good stuff, he absolutely. <laughs> So he's he is very cute. Now, does he still have the uh, the glands that would... He does not. Nope. So he was neutered, and he um, has no scent glands, so he cannot produce a spray. So they had to sedate him to do that. Yep. That's actually the only time that he did spray. That was another reason that we knew that he didn't really have those natural instincts, because people were taking care of him at our pre-release facility, and he wasn't spraying. He wasn't making any smells. <laughs> the only time he sprayed was when he was getting those glands removed. So he was not scared at all. Now, uh, while they have them sedated, do they have to look at their teeth and just see their the health of their I think so. I think so, yeah. So he was still very young. He was a little baby when he got neutered and came to us and stuff like that. So yeah, he gets all of our education animals get checked a couple times every year and they get annual exams. That way we know that everybody's doing well and healthy and everything. I don't think we look at their teeth unless we think that there is an issue because that is kind of stressful for them to go to the hospital and be sedated and all that kind of stuff. So Mostly if they're not eating properly. Yeah, so if there's a diet that's not really working for them, if they're not eating and we suspect it might be a tooth issue, then we would bring them in and pursue that further. But if there's no issues, we don't really get close to their faces very often. (laughs) No, he doesn't look like he's missed a meal. What do you feed him? (laughs) Um, That is a good point. He's actually on a little bit of a diet now. He gets gets 45 grams of vegetables, 45 grams of fruit, 25 grams of what we call fox chow, which is basically essentially just Rachel Ray dog food. So that works for him. And then we also give him 12 grams of meat. 
Oh, wow. So that's okay. his daily daily diet. And then we hide it. He's a really good scavenger, and he really likes finding stuff. So we give him some, like, slow feeders, some little, like, dog toys and stuff like that. So that's one that you have to – he has to push it around. And in each container, there's a whole bunch of little containers that he has to scavenge for his food. So that kind of slows him down a little bit and helps <laughs> him to not ingest it all in one big gulp like he would want to. So um, I thought that was a Frisbee. It's a feeder. He's back and going to yeah, sleep. Said, yeah. I've, <laughs> I've met all you guys. Time to go back to you bed. You guys are boring and you didn't yep. give me anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what he's really thinking. And here is Coconut, who is actually our chipmunk. Um, she is probably in this box right here. So this box has a hole on one side and then it has a sliding door that when we go in to clean her, um, we don't leave her out. We shut that door. That way she can't get out. But sometimes she does like to lift up the door. She's a very strong chipmunk. So we have to kind of watch her. So this is kind of where she hangs out. She pulls bedding in and everything. So that's kind of her little chipmunk nest in there. But then she does come out and plays with her toys, and we put her food in here and everything. So I'm not sure if she'll come out. Um, she is one of our cases where it's a neurological issue. So we think that she was attacked by a cat, which happens a lot. Outdoor cats will find chipmunks and flying squirrels and other kind of baby squirrels and stuff like that and think that they're a very fun toy to have. So um, Coconut was the victim of a cat attack. She came in with some puncture wounds on her head. So we know that she has some neurological damage damage from that. Oh wow. So okay. Okay. And then in this one is our flying squirrel who is another neuro animal, but he is another one that is off on the program off site. So he's not in there. I didn't even realize we had flying squirrels. They're actually the most common squirrel in Ohio. Really? Yeah. Do but we don't see like them because they look like tiny little pudgy chipmunks essentially they kind of look more like a chipmunk than a squirrel in my opinion they have those big eyes because they are more nocturnal they're kind of crepuscular so when the sun is rising and setting they'll be flying between the trees and gliding from tree to tree but we don't see them as much as gray squirrels because right. gray squirrels are out and about during the day but yeah there are more flying squirrels than gray squirrels in ohio i'll be done we're learning something we're learning a lot in fact i think we might make that dr kavitko's question of the day what are the most common squirrels in ohio don't call yet but in a minute we're going to do the that question of the day so you have a chance to win those flowers from DeSantis Florist. We're here with Allison Sullivan, the service coordinator, and Dusty Lombardi, the executive director of the Ohio Wildlife Center. We're about to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, but before we do, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and the question of the day is, which of the following squirrels is the most prevalent in Ohio? Is it A, eastern gray squirrels, B, fox squirrels, C, red squirrels, or D, flying squirrels, okay? The winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavicko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Hi, 
I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today, 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Glenda on the line. Hi, Glenda. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for calling in. What is the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? Flying squirrels. Flying squirrels. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I just heard it on the radio. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea myself until yesterday. Isn't that funny? So, <laughs> Glenda, what do you do for a living? I'm retired. Oh, okay. Retired uh, squirrel photographer or something? No, I'm just kidding. I, was, uh, <laughs> I, was, I, I worked uh, for a couple of, of attorneys. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you for listening, and please stay on the line. We need to get that information uh, from you as to where to send those flowers, okay? Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So, okay, let's go back to the Ohio Wildlife Center and hear more from Allison Sullivan and Dusty Lombardi, beginning with red squirrels. The little uh, red ones now, the little red squirrels. Those are called red squirrels. <laughs> yeah. And Who named them? Also, yes. <laughs> well, also we, we didn't have those, and about a year ago, they kind of moved into the yes. backyard. You know, yeah, we like, can kind of tell that um, ranges are changing mm -hmm. as seasons are kind of changing, and climate is changing, unfortunately. Um, we're seeing more squirrels in different places. I saw a black squirrel down here in Columbus when I had yeah. never seen one before. Yeah, My husband's from Northeast been, Ohio, yeah. where they're all over there, but I just saw one in Columbus, like, earlier this year and it made me a little bit sad because I'm like you're not supposed oh, to be have, here but we had yeah. a family of the little red ones I named him Steve and he would chase Cute. everybody out of the yard oh, I yeah, mean it was like yeah, you cannot defend more, this entire yard they're one yard. of the more aggressive <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah and he was forward. half their size yep, yeah. yep they're feisty like, oh he was and it was and that, while he was chasing this one the other ones would Come back come and try back. to eat the food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, there's no way you can deny this whole yeah. yard. <laughs> anyway. I think turtle. You can look in here. Yeah, yeah, this is our resident snapping Ooh. turtle. He's oh a common goodness. snapping He's turtle. So um, his name is Billy. He is actually with us because he came to us inside his mom still. His mom oh. came to us about 20 years ago into our hospital, and she was a hit by car, which oh. happens a lot with these guys. They will just kind of settle in the middle of the road. People don't really want to get out and mess with that, so unfortunately they do get hit by cars a lot. So Billy's mom was hit by a car and while she was recovering in our hospital she actually laid a clutch of eggs and Billy was one of those eggs and so we had to raise the babies up until they were large enough to fend for themselves and in that time period Billy actually got into a little fight with one of his siblings and they don't have a large shell on their underside because they are such top predators so they don't need a lot of protection below them because they usually hang out on the bottom of the lakes and ponds and stuff like that so one of his siblings actually bit him in his reproductive organ oh, so that stunted oh. his testosterone levels so he is now unable to make babies so because he has lower testosterone levels that also makes him not as aggressive so mm. if you can imagine a snapping turtle would not be doing this out in the wild they'd be <laughs> sitting with their head back and their mouth wide open but Billy he wants to say hi yeah He's he looking doesn't up at really us. have the um, proper aggressive hormone that he should have so mm. he is Makes him a very good education animal, but <laughs> not a good wild snapping yeah, turtle. Don't there, his growth also? Um, yeah, he might be a little bit smaller than he should be. I know females can be about the size of like a large dinner plate, so I think he could be a little bit bigger, but he'll also live for a very long time, but probably not get much bigger. So he's about 20 years old. So our son has a, a turtle. He named him Turtle. Oh, and he's turtle. had him since uh, he was in undergraduate school at Ohio State, right? Mm -hmm. So probably... He's going to be, he's 39, so would that be 20, 20 years ago or oh, so? Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah, they'll live 60 to 80 years depending on the 
turtle, yeah. And I don't know how he yeah. took them from a girl who evidently didn't know how to do turtles. And yeah. he was like, y- you are not raising this animal correctly. Good for him, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. He's moved the with them. They've moved. Unfortunately, a lot of people think turtles are just great yeah. pets, yeah. and they don't really know how to take care of them. Yeah. And just they do require, they do, while, they do require they a certain diet. They need more than that, yeah. Husbandry mm-hmm. and Well, yeah, and his, his shell was water. not developing properly yeah. because she wasn't giving he didn't she didn't have the right lighting and everything yeah, right. enough sunlight yeah, right exactly. you need the vitamin d turtles everyone thinks it's simple and it's mm-hmm. not right it's really mm-hmm. not yeah. in fact i think didn't we help them move out to colorado because we drove we put him in the motorhome right because yeah, we had turtle you we had turtle, turtle. <laughs> we drove turtle out we there for them <laughs> that's nice <laughs> who's in there this is one of our foxes so this is our female fox she might come out she might be hiding taking a nap in one of her boxes right now. Yeah, she'll probably come back out and be out and about, um, but she is one of our red foxes. She's our female, and she is one of our newer animal ambassadors. We just got her earlier this summer because we actually got a call on our hotline about a fox wandering around outside essentially like a strip mall, like a tattoo parlor and stuff. She was just walking along the sidewalk, again, which is not a natural behavior for foxes. So we think that she might have come from a fur farm because of her coloration. She has very unique coloration. If you guys got to see her, hopefully she'll (coughs) come back out and see you guys in a second. But she looks essentially like a cross between a gray fox and a red fox. She has unique coloration. So we think that someone was breeding her for that. We don't think that that's something that, you know, would. And we've received a lot of calls last year about what we think yeah. were fox from fur farms. Some, for some reason, people seem to, there must have been a sale or something, and a lot of people purchased the foxes. Yes. Then they hit a certain age, and they're destructive in the house, yes. and people were just releasing them, we think. Yes. And so we were starting to get call after call, but this one, fortunately, we were able to yes. to bring into us, catch and bring in. Yeah, how do you yeah. catch a fox? Because um, they're crazy like a fox, right? Are, I mean, like... Yeah. <laughs> I think when they are so used to people, they are mainly food motivated. They're highly food motivated. So I think what they might have done is just put food. tempting food, yeah, in the back of a crate and then closed her in and then brought her into our hospital and did an mm-hmm. assessment and all that kind of stuff. But we also had a couple of foxes that would come and yeah. feed under the bird feeder. <laughs> yeah. It definitely doesn't take much to get them used to people. Yeah, they're very food motivated. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we all are. And Tommy, I'll talk to you, too, about the um, incidence of mange that w- that we're seeing in Fox. Um, mm-hmm. she'll, she'll be able to talk with you about that um, if you want to talk about it. But we, we have seen an increase in mange in the northwest section of Columbus, Dublin, Powell, mm-hmm. Arlington, mm-hmm. Westerville. So we think that there's two things going on. There's more Fox, and also the temperatures, like in the winter, are not getting, you know, sub-zero cold cold and so they're just constantly passing this mange around and we've been treating the animals um, but we're not sure how really effective it is. We keep them for about six weeks and they get treatment every two weeks while they're with us and we get them to a point where you know they're fully haired back up and they look great and they're not emaciated but we're we're still in we're still trying to figure it out. Figure it all out yeah yeah. Dusty was telling me that one theory is that people put out what she called rodenticide, which would be something to kill rodents, and then the predator birds eat the rodents, and then that can kill them as well. And so now there's no uh, predator for the fox, or at least not as much, especially the the little babies, you know, that the uh, predator birds can grab onto and, I guess, take up and eat. And so then the fox uh, population goes up. There are too many in the den, and they get mange. Okay, looks like it's time for us to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to hear about some peregrine falcons that are living at the Ohio Wildlife Center. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 628, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. You're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> So what do we have? Are these chicken hawks? What are these? These are both peregrine falcons. Okay, yeah, so that's what I know. Huh? Male on this side is Aragon, and then Arwen is our female on that side. So Aragon is an adult, and he has what we call a wing droop. So you guys can see how the wing facing us is kind of hanging down a little bit. It should be up kind of closer to his head. So he has some muscular issues on that wing, so he would not be able to fly as well. And then Arwen, and we know that she's a female. She is a lot larger, and then she's also a juvenile because she still has some darker feathers on her chest so she's a little bit younger but she had to have part of her wing amputated due to injury so she's they're both flighted but non flighted for what they would need to be out in the wild. I see. Is she laying eggs? Are they going to have um, little um, We do not know. We don't have a license to yeah, breed in captivity. Population. Yeah, but we have not seen them breed. They cohabitate okay, but they don't love each other. So I'm They're not both sure looking opposite directions, sure by the way. <laughs> They're at the opposite Any, side of the... Anytime they get close to each other, they both kind of scream at each other. So <laughs> they will live together and they don't attack each other. They do very well with each other, but I'm not sure if it's quite a love connection <laughs> for them so who knows interesting it's a brother yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we yeah. just we An just older got brother. her we just yeah. got her i think towards the fall of last year summer fall of last year so still a little bit new so who knows what will happen this season Okay, and I see that somebody had to cut that tree branch to the exact length and then run some screws through the cage to... Yeah, yeah. So we, um, I think we're working on getting some new perching in here. We do try and switch up the perching because it will kind of decay over time. And as they sit on it and defecate on it, it'll kind of get worn down. Um, but yeah, we usually use screws and sometimes zip ties and stuff like that to support it. Since they are pretty light, it doesn't take a lot. But we, yeah, we want to make sure that it's secure. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, can you can wing. see how she has a little bit different coloring. So does she like fly into a truck or something? What I'm do we, not we don't sure know what huh? her injury was. I just know that she was at our pre-release facility for a while and then I think we decided that she was not capable of flying. Are you shaking a little? Yeah, they shake when they're nervous, but then they also shake when they're excited. So you never okay. really know what they're doing. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. But might think that they're getting some more food. Could be Allison's here or Allison's yeah. here. <laughs> yes. I'm usually bringing them food, so I don't think they mind me very much. This is the house for Chase, who's our turkey vulture. He's another one that is out on the program. So he has cataracts in his eyes. He was brought to us and was running into things. So our vet looked at his eyes, and he's pretty much blind, not completely blind. He can still see things a little bit, but he relies heavily on voice. So if you talk to him, he gets very excited, and he'll follow your How voice. programs do you like you do programs every weekend just about or um it depends on the season so right now since it's winter and stuff we are doing a lot of off-site things and then in the summer there's a lot of people that come here and book tours and stuff like that yeah so in the winter we're a little bit slower but yeah we do a significant i would say probably still yeah one every weekend probably a couple during the week as well we go, the busy season is coming up we go to all the elementary schools